before I get into this, I just want to say it never ceases to amaze me just how loyal people are to their idols, to these people who they've never met, or maybe they have, to these people who they've looked up to for the past two years that have done nothing but lie to you, gaslight you, and give you hopium. When the veil started to be lifted from my eyes about the Patriot Truther movement that aligned so deeply and entrenched with the new age, one spirit that I am extremely familiar with and one that I recognized upon inflection into all of my beliefs and ideologies when I was made a new creation in Christ. Friends, I don't tell you any of this to hurt you or to hurt our quote unquote movement. I don't do this to divide. I don't do this because I'm blackpilled. On the contrary, I fully expect to be divided in the name of Christ. And I do it because I hate to see people deceived the same way I was deceived. Especially evil, corrupt people pretending to be on your side when they're clearly not. I do it because I care and because I love the truth. No matter how ugly... Now, as we know, our data has been collected for decades. They don't necessarily hide that fact from you. And to be honest with you, I've never really cared. It's just something that I've accepted as part of our life living in 2022. But what I want you to be aware of as you navigate through the internet is how your data that they've compiled for decades is used against you to manipulate you, brainwash you, and push you into different thought patterns. All right, let's dig in. Yesterday, I shared a video about Candace Owens and her website, Social Autopsy, that was going to be used as a doxing website to ruin people's lives for using free speech on the internet. Thankfully, it was shut down by, get this, liberals, but the conservatives were actually the ones who funded it because they believed all of her lies. I think one of the right's main issues and why they're easy to manipulate is because they are way too trusting. She lied and called it an anti-bullying site when it was clearly a doxing site that even uh, children were safe from. Let me show you how it works. Plug in the name of any person, company, or organization. Our database will return any number of profile hits, which can then be narrowed down by city and state. When you've located a user, you will be brought to their autopsy report, which will consist of real screenshots of words that they have shared across social media platforms. Have someone that you'd like to add to our morgue? Submit them. Our database is continually grown by anonymous submissions from individuals like you. Because why engage in an online back-forth argument with friends over insulting statuses and comments when you can instead screenshot their harsh words and privately submit them to our database? In other words, if someone says something mean over the internet, don't argue with them about it. Dox them! We exist as a clean archive of an individual's words only, from which employers, friends, and universities alike may draw their own conclusions. Simply put, social autopsy is your digital footprint, so be mindful of the words that you share. What about minors? We are seeing a lot of people that are showing concern for minors and I guess this is sort of a two-prong approach which is first, you guys should be visiting the terms of service on Facebook and on Twitter because they thoroughly explain what it means to be a minor and what you sign up and what you agree for when you check that box and agree to their terms of usage. Um, Pretty much, if you are a minor, you are not excluded from anything if you are posting in a public place saying awful things. What's even more concerning is after I posted the video of her doxing website, I still had patriots in my comment section defending her using the communist fist as her logo for her latest documentary. Yes, I understand that her latest documentary is about exposing BLM, which is a communist organization. Yeah. I understand that, but what I am trying to show you is that clearly Candace has a history of believing that communistic tactics should be used on American citizens. So do I think that she completely changed her ways and was red-pilled and immediately launched into Mossad stardom? Absolutely not. I also want you to really consider the timing of when this came out and all of the things that she comes out with. They're all 
narrative driven. And if you are on the right and you're not assessing how they're using your data to manipulate you, you are at risk for being manipulated or thought raped. Do you want someone who believes that communist tactics such as these should be normalized in America and talked about psychopathically the way that she was just narrating in that advertisement? Do you want her manipulating your thoughts or steering narratives unknowingly? Because that's what they're all doing, the entire conservative right network. They are the voice to nudge you to have thoughts that are not your own by pressing on your pressure points, which they've been studying for decades. Here's what Cambridge Analytica would say. With 10 likes, I can predict your behavior better than your coworker. With 300 likes, I can predict your behavior better than your wife. But what they're really saying there is by algorithmically observing your behavior, I can learn to understand you and figure out how to push you to extremes. So if you're somebody who is politically in the middle, it's really very unlikely that I'm going to turn you into an extreme leftist. But if you are somebody who is on the left and pretty far out in the margins of the left, I can probably push you to extremism. I can get you so wound up and so angry because I know what you're afraid of or I know what pushes your buttons and I can do the same with the right. What's new is I can micro-target to scale. So I can do this to millions of people at a time now and manipulate a population to turn out to vote for the person I want them to vote for or not to turn out to vote for the person I don't want them to vote for. Cambridge Analytica is a data collecting company funded by Robert Mercer and used by Trump campaign, according to Little Sis. Now, you have to remember that Bannon and Mercer were thick as thieves. And you also have to remember that the Trump campaign doesn't necessarily equate to Trump. Bannon was on the Trump campaign. Unraveling the Cambridge Analytica scandal in relation to Trump is a whole nother video that I'm not going to focus on today. But what I do want you to focus on is the Mercers who funded Cambridge Analytica, as well as Peter Thiel, who also helped fund the work that they were doing. And now I want to see how fast I can connect Candace Owens and her husband, George Farmer, who has a net worth of $180 million, back to the Mercers and Peter Thiel. Spoiler alert, it won't take long. Just a quick background on Candace Owens' husband, George Farmer. He was a member of the highly secretive Bullingdon Club, the same secret society that Boris Johnson came out of. Yep, that Boris Johnson. Yikes. And to enter the club, you can only enter by invitation, and there they have this initiation ritual that is basically the trash to destroy your room and destroy all your objects. <laughs> And when all this was, was going up in smoke, uh, Boris Johnson shook my hand and said, congratulations, man, you've been elected. In researching it, I kept finding the Bullingdon Club and the Skull and Crossbones in the same articles. It's said that Bullingdon has become a byword for upper class corruption, misbehavior, and cronyism. Which just means the appointment of friends and associates to positions of authority without proper regard to their qualifications. So, secret society? Check. Well, we know that George Farmer is the CEO for Parler. Parler's backers include Rebecca Mercer. Yes, the same Mercers that funded Cambridge Analytica. Told you it wouldn't take long. And Parler has a business relationship with Salesforce. And Salesforce board members include the Secretary of State under George Bush, as well as the YouTube CEO. And Salesforce is part of a coalition that uses data exchange standards to enable more secure access to digital vaccination records. Here they are partnering with IBM to help organizations and individuals verify vaccine and health status. Here they are also involved in border activities to manage border activities and digital engagement with citizens. Peter Thiel, who also helped fund Cambridge Analytica, is also very close to the immigration processes. Clearview is an app that searches people's faces to help identify who they are. Their claim is that they're using it to help fight child crimes, but I beg to differ. My question is, are they collecting data on the criminals? Or are they collecting data 
on the children. You see, Peter Thiel, he's a co-founder of PayPal, Palantir Technologies, which leads right back to the CIA. And he was also the first outside investor in Facebook, or as some of you may know, LifeLog rebranded. Since 2010, Palantir has partnered with the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. They claim to use this to help find missing children. However, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children leads right back to none other than the Podesta family. If you look at the top of the screenshot from this archived website of National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, you'll see the Polaris Project on the left. We know that the Clinton Global Initiative partnered with the Polaris Project in 2009. So the Polaris Project, powered by the Clintons, operates the National Human Trafficking Resource Center and runs the National Human Trafficking Hotline. They claim it is the most comprehensive database of modern day slavery organizations ever compiled for the public in almost 200 countries. And in 2014, they had 200 organizations in the database. So Peter Thiel owns all of the intelligence and data information in regards to child trafficking. You'll find that most trafficking organizations use the Clinton number, including Tim Tebow and Craig Sawyer. There has been countless others and should be the first thing that you check. In trying to find the connection between the Polaris Project and the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, I found something that I wasn't looking for. Child trafficking sites selling children with sexual verbiage on them. So it's a little concerning that Peter Thiel has the database for all of the missing children with ties directly to the three-letter agencies who you can tie provably all the way back to the finder's cult where the three-letter agencies were at a minimum complicit at maximum directly involved and conspired to cover up the investigation and charges of horrific child sex crimes. So let's get back to Salesforce and don't worry, I'll tie Candace back to this one too. Parler received help from Salesforce to get it back up and running. Why? Because who went to Parler? The ones who were getting banned off free speech, the ones who were being loud about fighting communism invading our country. Remember when the leak happened and everyone kind of freaked out? Well, they're still in the hands of evil. The Farmer family is extremely well connected. And uh, George, Candace Owens' husband, is the metals dealer for Coots Bank, which is the richest people in England, including the Queen, including the Bank of England. They do asset management for the bank. They're directly connected, but they're a private corporation, but they're directly connected to the asset control of the Bank of England, which we've always said is where, you know, that's where the big corrupt money is, but it's the people who handle the hidden investments because nobody can look into the corporation's hidden books, right? So even though Candace on her own side of the family comes from money, what she really wanted was to be famous. Now, we all know that Candace is a communist in disguise now because of her website, her doxing website, normalizing communist tactics. So I'm sure it wasn't a hard sell when they told her that she would be famous by subverting the right, by pushing communist ideologies in disguise. So let's talk about Glorify, the solution to PayPal and its wokeism, right? Wrong. Literally funded by one of the co-founders of PayPal itself, Peter Thiel, the same one that ties into all of the missing children's stuff. The same one who helped the Mercers and the Cambridge Analytica scandal. Take notice of the very first accounts who went over to Parler. Candace Owens, of course. Dan Bongino, Charlie Kirk. Oh, Mike Flynn Jr. Laura Loomer, Paul Joseph Watson, Rand Paul, Mike Cernovich, Dinesh, Scott Pressler, Brandon Straka, all shills. But one to notice also, Kanye West. Oh, and don't forget the freedom phone that Candace shilled for as well. Think back to 2020. Think of all the problems that arose and the solutions from, quote, patriots getting canceled from social media. And then out of it was born Gab, Getter, Telegram, Parler. Kanye has been groomed and is being used to carry out psychological operations on the patriot side. He's building tension with the BLM stuff with Candace's help. He's saying he's being censored while really he's aligned with all the people he's calling out. Then he gets banned from PayPal. Here's Flynn pushing the narrative. Of course, he's got to plug his buddy Peter Thiel. Because don't worry, Candace is already ready for the solution for you and to steal all your information to use it against you in the form of psychological operations. All I'm asking is for you to filter everything through that 
lens. All right. Thanks for listening and God bless y'all.